Thanks for tuning in to the Jets FM, our lads football network video as we take a look at the New York Jets draft for 2024. This is the first of a handful of videos that I'm going to produce between now and next week. I look forward to wrapping up the entire draft for the New York Jets on Sunday. Hopefully I'll be able to hook up with Jan Levine. Uh, we haven't done a video together for a while. A former Jet fan, actually, he's a current Jet fan, but uh, kind of, he's sort of like a former uh, analyst here on the network. But he'll be back, and we'll talk some Jets football hopefully on Sunday afternoon. And so look out for that Sunday evening, the latest. We should have a video out recapping the Jets draft. It does not mean that I won't come on before that. If anything happens, you know, anything blockbuster, or anything really important, I'll definitely uh, give my opinion over the next few days. Um, but uh, worst case scenario, we will return to talk Jets football on Sunday. Okay, so what I want to do is take a look, uh, first of all, at the um, draft picks. Because right now the Jets, of course, don't have a second round draft pick. And this is going to be the big deal as far as I'm concerned on why... I think it's going to impact what they do more than anything. Uh, we can take a look at it right now. Uh, here are the draft picks. Pretty simple. Those are the seven, uh, seven rounds. There's the missing round right there. You got also a missing round here, but you do have two fourths. All right. And you also have a couple of six. So that takes away the fifth, but you have a big gap here. And that's very important. Because I think without this second round pick, it's going to be really hard for the Jets to draft a quarterback that, you know, might be good enough uh, to look at down the road as a potential starter. I don't think you could do that here. You know, Jordan Travis is not going to be the Jets starting quarterback in three years. Get, the, get that out of your head. Neither will Devin Leary. All right? So if you're going to draft one of those guys, uh, and look, for me, I hope it's uh, if you're going to draft like a, a long-term backup, like a young backup, I'd like to get a hold of Sam Hartman uh, later on, fifth round, seventh round. Okay, so what I'm going to do, a few things quickly here is I'm going to go over um, the uh, couple of scenarios. I'm going to go over the scenario of the Jets making a trade, and I'm going to go over the scenario, of course, of the Jets just staying put. All right? So first of all, and I'm also going to go over the players that uh, I'm going to give my mock draft. I'm going to, I'm going to go to my, 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 uh, my complete mock draft for the Jets with or without trades. Then I'm going to go over the players that I hope that the Jets will pick my favorite players in the draft, who are, who I also believe will be fits with the Jets, um, and anything else we can come up with here. Okay, so let's take a look first of all at no trades. All right, and this one I actually found out was uh, the same prediction for one of our old buddies, Zach Rosenblatt of the Athletic. So I was kind of surprised, uh, but. Then again, you know, look, Zach does a really good job, except when he tries to uh, go on a tangent with other NFL reporters of the female persuasion to try and rip apart the Jets without any facts. But other than that, uh, this is uh, this is a, this is a player here, Pratt, that I believe very well could end up, or again, if the Jets are looking, let's just put it this way, if the Jets are looking for a quarterback, I hope they are. We talked about with Zach Wilson being gone, if he was going to let go, and they made the trade, I was glad they uh, did it the way that they did it. We told you they weren't going to dump him. Okay, so I know there's some reporters out there, oh, the Jets are just dump him. That's just idiocy. So they just didn't dump him. They got something in return. And, uh, and I'm real happy for Zach that he's going to Denver and Sean Payton and he's going to have a chance to, to have somebody that knows what he's doing on the offensive side of the ball. And that's going to be the best thing for Zach. And it's going to suck for the Jet fans because we, we, we basically handled all the dirty work for Zach. You know, we made him mentally tough. And now he's going to go somewhere and he's going to learn finally with all the talent and the mental toughness. And he's going to become a starting quarterback in the NFL. There's no question in my mind about that. But... That's gone. What it does, though, is it opens up the, I think, what has to be the opportunity for the Jets to add now a young quarterback. Uh, again, could it be a quarterback that they look at like Pratt? Because that, for, for me, once you come out of the, 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 the top six quarterbacks, Pratt, to, I, I think there's Pratt, and then I also think there's a gap. 
Uh, that's just that's just the way I look at it as far as the quarterback situation in 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 the draft. Everybody has their top six, of course, but then you've got. I mean, if if I, and and I'm going to talk a lot about our lads' rankings because hey, why not? Why why wouldn't I? So Pratt would be the seventh. Then you have Milton, and by the way, I think I've mentioned this many times before, and I'll just say it again: Joe Milton has absolutely zero chance of being uh, a competent NFL starter. Zero. I'll give him. I'll tell you what. I'll give him five percent, and that's only if he ends up somewhere with. An, an offensive quarterback, an offensive coordinator, a coach that knows what he's doing. He has no chance if he ends up somewhere, zero, if he ends up somewhere. And I'm only talking about backup anyway. He's never going to be a starter in this league. Um, so I give him no shot. Um, but if he ends up with a really good teacher, he could probably hang on as a pretty good backup. So, um, but then you have Rattler. See, the problem with Rattler is he doesn't have a downfield game. And in the NFL, if you don't have a downfield game, very, very hard for you to be a competent number one. Travis just isn't, he just doesn't have the, oh, and plus, he, he doesn't have the overall game. You know, he's not big enough. We saw what happened when he got hurt. You know, that's that, you're going to get hurt in college. You're going to get hurt in the NFL. That's got that body. That's just not going to work for him. Uh, he could be a good backup. I got no problem with that. I think he could be a backup, but that's it. Uh, he's, he's not going to be anything more than a backup. And I don't know how good he can be, just a backup. Um, Leary, same thing. Uh, but then you have Sam Hartman and I believe Sam Hartman, uh, is, uh, see for me, I th- you got the top six, then you have Pratt, who I think is a standalone because once you get through the six, Pratt is, is all, is an Island by himself as the best number two option. Cause most people will look at Pratt as like a number two. He's a backup. Cause that's what happens when he, cause our, our let has him as a third or fourth run grade. And that's where most people have him. That's why I have him in a third. So when you when you're a third round quarterback, you know that that's backup. You're supposed to be a starter, okay? But he's the best backup quarterback prospect that has a shot to be a really good starter in the NFL. And that is why, if the Jets are going to add someone in the third round, I don't think they're going. I don't think it will be available in the fourth. But if they're going to get someone in the third round. Pratt's going to have to be the guy because if they don't get Pratt, then I think you just pass on trying because that's it. Forget again. I just don't, I don't think that you should worry about Rattler, Travis or Leary unless they're available in the sixth or seventh round. I I don't think they all will be fifth round might be, and again, just don't have one. Um, and then seventh round, sixth round, seventh round, I'd rather go with Sam Hartman. So if I don't pick up Pratt in a third, then I'd rather have the Jets wait until the sixth or the seventh round, go after Sam Hartman. I think Sam Hartman has got a lot of like Gardner Minshew in him, that type of guy. I think he's going to be a quarterback. Uh, he's got tons of experience, just t- which, I, which is what I love. He's got tons of experience. Uh, he's got that kind of um, he's got the you know the, the moxie that Minshew has. He's got that backup look, the guy that's going to come off the bench and he can rally his team. And that's what Sam Hartman is, and that is why I believe he would be the way to go if you're not able to get Pratt in round three. And again, it's going to be a lot easier if they can get that second pick, that second round pick. If they don't, then it becomes very hard because then all of a sudden you're in a situation where if you don't get that second round pick back, and let's say you use that first pick on Brock Bowers or a lineman, okay? And then let's say you, use, let's say you do take Pratt in round three. Well, that means that, first of all, you know, the quarterback is not going to have anything to do with your team for a couple of years. So, so really, that means that you've used only one pick in the draft until the fourth round. That could be an impact for you. And that's just not, I, I, they, they need more. They just need more. And that's the reason why I think it's important for the Jets to trade out of that spot. And, and, and that's why, if you see here, see, now of course, I'm going to have the same players on the list, six, six, seven, and even Bortolini. But this is what you get, okay? If you trade down, now things are a little bit different, okay? Because now all of a sudden, you can still get Pratt, but you can go after that wide receiver. Everybody's to, oh, the Jets are better get a wide receiver with the, uh, or Brock Bowers with that first pick. This is, so, everybody knows this is a deep class of excellent receiver talent. And yet, once you start coming out of the first round, 
there is a big gap when it comes to offensive line help and prospects. So, and I'm not saying that Bordellini can't be a decent player in the league, but I can't. But but players like that, they'll probably just be okay. They'll be decent players. They'll be guys at, at best that you might be able to say, okay, maybe he's a starter. But chances are he's probably going to be a valuable backup. Okay, but that's not the case with skill players. As you know, running backs, receivers, and this is such a deep class of receivers. If the Jets can get that second pick and they can land a wide receiver like a Pearsall or a McConkey, one of those guys, to get with somebody like that, then it makes life a lot easier because I'm sure there are going to be fans if they don't go after Brock Bowers or if they don't pick in a Dunze at wide receiver with their first pick. Oh, you, no, not, not a sexy pick. Because I know there have been fans are just drooling over Brock Bowers for the past couple of weeks. I, I, I Again, I, I've said this before in other shows. I don't see it. It doesn't mean if he gets picked, I won't be happy about it. I've said before I trust Joe Douglas. So I'll, 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 I'll guess that he has a plan. Because he'll need to recoup somehow. I don't know if that's taking a pick, a first round pick next year. And making sure you get a pick in the second round this year. I don't know how you do it, but you have if you pick if if that's the pick, if Bowers is on the board and you pick him, you had better find a way to draft an offensive lineman before round three. And if you don't, and if you draft an offensive lineman in round three or round four, that guy that you better hit him. You better hit him. Uh, I, I just I'm, I'm having a hard time believing that that we're going to go into the to, to the start of the season this season, and we're not going to have at least one more blue chip offensive line prospect on the offensive line. I'm going to find that hard to believe. Bowers to me is a type of player that is um, he's a bonus player. And the Jets are not a team that can look for bonus players right now. The Jets need players. The Jets need guys that, first of all, we got to take care of the offensive line. Secondly, yes, do we need more receivers like tight end and receiver? Absolutely. But you don't have to get those guys in the first round. But you have to get those linemen early. And if they go ahead and pick this kid out of Washington, okay, this offensive lineman, I do believe that... They can get him at 11, 12, 13, 14. You know, we got to keep our fingers crossed that uh, the quarterback situation doesn't go quick. That starts with New England. Not that I want Marvin Harrison on the Patriots. But I tell you what, if, if Daniels does go to Washington, and I'm, oh, I'm hoping that, oh, if, J- if Jaden Daniels is somehow available for the Patriots, I'll have a heart attack. So if Jaden Daniels had a picture and the Patriots decide to draft Drake May or J.J. McCarthy, I'm going to live with that. I will live with that. I'd rather have that than take a Marvin Harrison. But if they go with Harrison, it works out in our favor in the draft because, again, that means quarterbacks are slipping, gives us a better chance to be on the board and someone wants one of those quarterbacks. Boom. We could trade down one, two, three, four spots. That's what we need to happen so we can get that additional pick. Not draft Brock Bowers. And look, if you want Brock Bowers, you could still trade down a couple of spots and get him. I just don't want to take him at 10. Okay, so let's now... Um, we're going to talk about a little... Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the strategy here, my strategy of these picks. Okay, so... Besides uh, the top two obvious ones. Did you notice Johnny Wilson? Now, how funny is that? But, look, you're talking about getting a wide receiver or a tight end like Brock Bowers. Well, what is everybody talking about Bowers? Oh, Bowers, you know, it's a chess piece. You can do so many things. But, hey, probably not good to, you know, put him there with uh, the Jets uh, staff. They don't know what they're doing. Which is probably, you're probably right, offensively. Um, but what is Johnny Wilson? He's a chess piece. So if you don't get Brock Bowers and you're, and you're not taking him with the 10th pick, you can get 
maybe a poor man's Brock Bowers, you get a Johnny Wilson. The guy who's going to be labeled a wide receiver, who can play in the slot, can play tight end, he can play in a multiple, he can play multiple position, you know, uh, uh, you can basically line him up in a mul- in a variety of ways, and 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 create mismatches. And he could very well be available in round four, if not round three. And again, what I'm doing is I'm just going on our lads, and I'm just going on their projection of where these players are going to go. And that is where Johnny Wilson is projected to go. Johnny Wilson is projected to go in the fourth or fifth round. So, hey, if he goes in the third, he do have a third. And how about Bordellini? I think Bordellini is the perfect pickup for the Jets. Now, they've already seen a bunch of tape already when, when, when they drafted our center of the future, Titman. And now you bring in his former teammate. I mean, this kid Bordellini, he can play center, he can play guard, he can play tackle. That's exactly what the Jets need. See, that's why if you're able to get the kid from Washington and, and, and Bordellini, I mean, that, is, that would be an awesome pickup for both of them. Because again, I think you have to, do, you have to take two linemen. And now you get two guys that can play just about everywhere. On the offensive line, that's that, that, that would be a home run if if they if they could figure out. And it's not not like I'm like a Bordellini fan, but I just think it works out perfectly. They obviously must know the kid from doing all the work last year, so why not bring him in? He's supposed to go around four or five, and that is with my without making trades and with making trades. I talked about Pearsall. I'm sure you must know about this kid already. And that's why, you know, really, I think it's possible. McConkie could be there. It's possible. Pearsall should be there. But Pearsall looks like he's he's got slot written all over him. That's exactly what the Jets need. He had a great combine testing really well athletically. There is one of those guys that has really good hands, doesn't drop passes, quarterback can trust him, and Aaron Rodgers doesn't have three or four years to wait for receivers to catch up to him. He needs guys he can trust right away. And that's what a kid like Pearsall would do. And so you're going, oh, I want Brock Bowers, the sexy guy in the first round, or I want Adunze, the sexy guy in the first round. You can still get a dangerous weapon in round two if you make that trade out. And by the way, since when does a does a does a, a playoff contending, Super Bowl contending, Super Bowl championship team need two star receivers, if not three? Because all I hear about, well, you can't count on Mike Williams, of course. Yeah, but. The Jets did not sign Mike Williams to a $10 million one year one-year contract if they thought he was not going to be available to play at a high level. Now, is it possible that he won't be able to? Yes. But that's not why they signed him. They signed him because they expect him to be out there and play at a high level. And to tell you the truth, I can't imagine they just signed him to play for one year and then they're just going to go ahead and let him go. Now, maybe they won't be able to afford him. But he could still be a, a player that's around here for a few years. So what? why do we need Wilson, Williams, and Adunze? What, what are we doing here? What kind of team are we building? Is it more important to have receivers or offensive linemen that can block? And, 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 and remember, too, Brees Hall is one of the best running backs in the league already. And when you have one of the best running backs in the league, what do you need three superstar receivers for? Come on. Including Brock Bowers. Come on. Which is why, by the way, if you were saying wide receiver tight end, I'd say I'd say tight end. If you were going to say one of the two, I would definitely go Bowers over Adunze. But I just don't think they need it. Once again, it's a pick is made. 
They get Brock Bowers. They get an Adunze. Hey, I'm going to be happy. It's fine. Who wouldn't want to have these kids on your team? And the other thing. Oh, Jets are all in. They're all in. This is this is this is about. Matter of fact, uh, taking a look at the mock draft that Rosenblatt did. He said, GM Joe Douglas has made it clear with all of his moves this offseason and the structures of the contracts he has given out that they are all in on winning in 2024. Now, what does all in mean? Because I think what they're trying to, what they want us to believe is that it's all or nothing. That we're mortgaging the future to win now. Now, do I think that they're trying to make sure that they have a team that could be Super Bowl competitive no later than next year? Yes. Of course. You don't have much time with Aaron Rodgers. I get it. But they are not going to be in a situation <clears throat> where in three years, no matter what happens with Aaron Rodgers, let's just say he's gone in three years, we're a three-win team because we went all in. And it'll take us six more years to get back to where we want to be. No, I, I don't see that. I'm sorry. I don't see the all in. You, you We're going we're gonna to disregard the future. And we're, we're, it's just it's just all about the next year or two. That, I, I think they get carried away with the all-in stuff. And, but, but, and, and by the way, I, I don't see how drafting a lineman with your first-round pick as opposed to, say, Brock Bowers means that you're not all-in. How many times, as Jet fans, how many times do we have to go through this with injuries, on the offensive line especially, before anybody in that office... And look, Joe, you can say what you want. You can be critical all you want. Did he make a mistake last year? You didn't have enough depth? Yeah, I, I think you could, that was fair to say. Okay? It's fair to say. But I also believe that he's the type of guy that if he made a mistake, look what he did at quarterback. All right, we made a mistake. We got to bring in a veteran to brought in a veteran. Same thing on the offensive line. And if you think that, they, that just because they went out and brought in a couple of veteran tackles, that that means that, all right, now we're set. How are, how are we set? Remember, we had injuries last year. So if you've learned your lesson from last year, then that means you've got to do more on the offensive line. You're not done. Now, I have no idea if this kid Carter is going to turn out to be anything. I, I know they believe he will be. I know they believe that in 2025, he will, he will be either their starting right or left tackle, more than likely right tackle. That's our starting right tackle in 2025. But who is your starting left tackle in 2025? And is Aaron Rodgers going to be here? Yes. Aaron Rodgers is not playing for a year. Aaron Rodgers will play for at least two years. So how do you know right now that what you're saying is, oh, well, Carter, I guess he'll start at left tackle next year then, right? Well, we, don't, we haven't even seen him play yet. So to project whether he's a right tackle, that's one thing. But now you want to project him as a left tackle in 2025? So that means you've got to find the guy now in this draft. And you have a much higher success rate if you get him in the first round, not in the third or the fourth. All right, as far as some of these other players now. Uh, by the, the the final three, just want to give you a little bit of deal of why I went after the final three. Okay, I really like Trey Taylor. If you're into college football like I am, then you knew that Air Force had one of the best defenses in college football over the last couple of years. They were one of the best defensive teams in college football this past year. 
and Taylor was a big reason why. He won the Jim Thorpe Award. That's the best defensive back. He's got some of that blood, that NFL blood. He's the cousin of Ed Reed. I mean, he's that really, that, that key guy in the back end, that safety spot, that is going to be an aggressive player. He knows how to hit. He's got good instincts, good ball skills. He can pick the pass, which is important. Just need guys who can hold on to the football, create turnovers. So I'd love to get a hold of a guy like Trey Taylor. Now, JT Bertrand. All JT Bertrand would be for me at this point, uh, picking him, first of all, I think he'd be an excellent, all these guys would be excellent additions to special teams. You know, Bertrand's been team captain, so that's obviously important to Joe. Very big uh, as far as smarts. Excellent football IQ for Bertrand. He's like one of those old school kind of middle linebacker guys. He's not very fast. That's not why he'd be here. That's why he'd be in the sixth round. But again, I think he would fit a nice little role. I think they could use a little bit more depth at linebacker. And I think he'd be a good fit, especially because he'd be excellent on special teams. And then uh, uh, Rosenblatt did go with Frank Gore Jr., which I, I'd like. I mean, Frank Gore Jr. is one of my favorite uh, sleepers in the draft at running back. Um, so if, I, if they get Shipley, if they get Gore Jr., uh, if they get the kid Vidal out of Troy, I'd be happy with all of those. Even the kid Johnson from Washington, I'd be okay with. Those are, but but I do think that they'll, that that they'll take a look and add a running back late. Shipley, I went with because I think he's he's a guy that you get because he can do a lot more. I think Vidal might end up being the better running back actually. Johnson would be like a really good physical kid. I mean, th- that's a kid that's going to go to war for you, get you the hard, you know, yards if you need to get them, short yardage, goal line. So, and Gore, I mean, he just was such a big, big time player for that Southern Miss school for the past several years. We know about his dad. I think he's an underrated kid. I really do. I think, I think he's just going to succeed. Now, I don't think he's going to be a big time player, but I think he's the kind of guy that you can bring in, get late, add to your roster. So those are some of the guys that I had on my no trade. And on my trade, the only added player was Dwayne Carter. Now, I think uh, adding another defensive tackle would be a very smart thing for this defense. I mean, how many times are we going to talk about the fact that Quinn and Williams, the last couple of years, we've talked about it. He, it would be really good if they can get somebody young alongside of him to grow with him. Because right now, all they're doing is every year, they're plugging and placing veterans. Get a young kid. And Dwayne Carter, I think, is the perfect kid for this team and in that spot in the fourth round. A lot of experience. A three-time team captain, the first time ever in Duke history. Good against the run. He's got the motor you're looking for. He can handle double teams. I can make make life a lot easier for Quinnen if he needs to handle double teams, of course. So getting a guy like Carter, I think, would be a really good deal, too, for the Jets. They need to get a young DT, and they need one more lineman in this draft. It was interesting. I was doing uh, the mock draft, one of my mock drafts, and I had Verse still available. And I was like, huh, Jared Verse. Imagine if he was still on the board and the Bears didn't take him. Would the Jets, would they think about taking Jared Verse? Well, why wouldn't they? I know it's not a need. You know, well, McDonald, Johnson, the last couple of years. So they're fine there. But still, that, that would have to get them thinking, right? With that defense, just imagine adding another edge rusher to that defense. Okay. So now, uh, what I want to just do here. Is I'm going to talk about each position and just give you some guys that I want the Jets to take because I like these kids and they could fit with the Jets. Okay, we've talked about running back. We've talked about quarterback. Again, if they go high, I want Pratt. If they go low, I want Hartman. Wide receiver. Okay, let's say they get that second-round pick. Uh, Roman Wilson. 
I know him well, being a Michigan fan. I think the kid is a can't-miss prospect. Now, how good is he going to be? He's got a ceiling. So he's, he's, he's one of these kids that uh, is just, and, and by the way, I think he'll be a, a very good player right away, too. Uh, you also got the kid Washington out of Virginia. I think you can probably get him around later. Both Wilson and Washington will be in the slot. Again, we're looking for slot guys. And if they do get the second round pick, I mentioned Pearsall and McConkey. You know, Worthy and Mitchell, the two Texas kids, are probably going either first round late or early second round. So I do not think they'll be available for the Jets. But if you want if you want to wait and take a wide receiver late, again, we mentioned Wilson in round four. You got the kid McCaffrey out of Rice I like. He's one of those kids that is, and if you've heard the name, you got it. He's got the, he's got the genes. Christian, that's his older brother. And he, he played, uh, I think he started out his career, I mean, I followed the kid. He, he started out his career, uh, he started out his career at Rice. Excuse me, at uh, Nebraska as a quarterback. And then he went to Rice. And he changed from a quarterback to a wide receiver. And it turned out that he was their best and most consistent receiver. And by the way, Rice made a bowl this year. And he was a big reason for it. So... I think McCaffrey would be a welcome addition. And the other Washington, Taj Washington out of USC, another kid who could play the slot with a lot of experience. He's a four-year starter. Now, now the Washington from Virginia, you're going to have to get him a little bit earlier. But that kid, was. if you take a look at it again, I'm looking at guys not only that can play in the slot, but that will be consistent with their hands. And that's another player that basically catches anything you throw his way. And then maybe if they want to you know, go after the priority free agents and things of that nature, keep an eye on Enos Smith out of Texas A&M. You know, he's one of these kids that injuries have been the, the big reason why he just hasn't, things haven't turned out for him. But he has the potential, if he can stay healthy, he has the potential to, to be in the NFL for a while. Because a, a couple of years ago, people were looking at him as a second or third round draft pick. But he's got to stay healthy. And there's a chance he may not even be drafted. So those are some of the uh, receivers that I would that, that I prefer, especially where the Jets are, 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 are going to be drafting tight end. Um, look, here's the thing, too, to keep in mind with Bowers. The whole idea of drafting Bowers and why I said he's, he's a bonus. Let's say they don't draft Bowers. And now we're in the third round, fourth round, fifth round. Are you saying, hey, we need a tight end? I just don't think you are. Why would you be saying that in the third, fourth, or fifth round? You already have Ruckert. Ruckert is, is ready now to, 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 hopefully, to take over as the number one guy. Hopefully. Conklin, serviceable. But Ruckert should be ready to do that. They drafted the kid last year as well. They got another guy on the team that has been good on special teams. And so I, I think I think they're in, in, in pretty decent shape at tight end. I really do. That's why, to me, Brock Bowers would just be a bonus. Okay. Now, oh, speaking of tight ends, the, the, the best tight end that I think, um, again, I think would be way too high to draft a tight end. There's other needs that they have. But the kid out of Penn State, Theo Johnson, he's, I think he's the best all-around tight end in the draft for somebody. Uh, if you're looking for someone that can just do pretty much everything. And he's got, a, uh, he's got, and I think he'll be better in the NFL than he was at Penn State. They just had an erratic passing game. And I think he's got room for growth. So I'd keep an eye on the if Johnson's available in the third round, I'd, I'd keep an eye on him. And then tight ends that you could pick up in the fifth through seventh round that I think are going to wind up uh, with uh, potentially good careers 
uh, the kid McLaughlin out of Arizona, Eric All, the former Michigan tight end, went to Iowa, got hurt last year, and Barner, the other Michigan tight end. But Barner strictly block. That's it. If you, so if the Jets want a blocking tight end, like if they want a number three to be just a blocker, then uh, Barner's the guy that you want to look after. Okay, offensive line. Now, let's say they don't t- take the kid out of, uh, well, let's just say they don't take an offensive line with their top pick and they do go after Brock Bowers or, or a wide receiver, let's say. Okay, so what do they look at, whether they get a second-round pick or not? Well, uh, the only interior guy that could be available uh, in the second round is the kid Barton out of Duke, another Duke kid, because he can play all positions, all, th- all, all, just about everywhere on the offensive line. Um, I'd also take a look, because he could be available in round three, is a kid, uh, is a kid Glaze out of Maryland. He could play both tackle and guard. And also to keep an eye on the kid uh, uh, from Pittsburgh. Um, Goncalves, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Another kid that could play multiple positions. Should be around in the fourth or the fifth round. I bring him up because same same thing like the Wisconsin deal. You've probably seen him on tape. And, and maybe if they've seen something they like, then instead of Bordellini then maybe this kid from Pitt could be somebody that you can pick up a little bit later in the draft, like I said, somewhere around the fourth or fifth round. And what's good about him is that it, he really is uh, turno, I, I should say penalty free. Does not get called for penalties very much. On defense, If remember I just talked about the defensive tackle position, so that's fourth round, Dwayne Carter. If they want to use one a little bit earlier, one of the favorite players in this draft. I've said it since January, December. I'm all over this kid. More and more people have started to watch him. More and more people are starting to get in, fall in love with him. I love the kid Fisk out of Florida State. Love him. I would just be ecstatic if the Jets were able to get him. Uh, Jenkins, uh, the kid from Michigan. You can take a look at him. I, I don't really look at I, I don't really look at Jenkins if he was available in the third round. And then you have um, uh, Carter and a kid uh, from Clemson. A oh, row, 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 row. But Fisk is the man. Love the kid. He is going to be a tremendous player in the NFL. I'm not telling you he's going to be superstar, but he is just going to be a really good player. That's uh, uh, that was not drafted in the first round, and he may not even be drafted in the second round, even though I think he will be. Okay, linebackers. Love Peyton Wilson out of NC State. Love him, and he's been healthy the last few years. This is now. I, I just think. I mean, if you, especially now. Here's another reason why I would like to have a kid like uh, uh, Wilson or Gray, Cedric Gray out of uh, UNC. Both these guys can cover, and if they can grab a linebacker. Let's just put it this way. If they grab a linebacker who can cover in the third or fourth round, what that's going to tell me is what I hope happens is they grab a linebacker who can cover so they can take Quincy Williams off of coverage every once in a while and have him go after the quarterback. Because, you know, as as good as a job, nobody's uh, nobody's saying Jeff Olbrick hasn't done a good job. As good as a job he's done, I don't think he's done a great job. I think he's done a good job. And here's why: because you got to start being creative. Great coaches are creative. I haven't seen creativity out of Olbrick yet. You want to be creative? Get Quincy Williams to rush the passer more. But if you're afraid of leaving, you know, other uh, potential uh, receivers open, well, you're gonna have a much better chance if you grab one of these kids like uh, like Gray or Wilson because CJ just can't do it anymore. All right, at corner. Look, we don't know what's going on with DJ Reed. I have no idea if he's gonna be available next year if we can if we can resign him, and if that if, if if that becomes an issue and they can't resign him. Well, 
they're going to look for someone in this year's draft possibly. We, we, you know, you should be very familiar with Max Melton being in, you know, Rutgers and all, and he tested out fabulously. So he could be a very good, interesting corner pick rounds two to three. Uh, Jackson, uh, the corner from Oregon. I like him. Keep an eye on the kid Hart from Notre Dame. He's got good size. He's one of those corners. He's probably going to end up in Seattle. He's one of those, you know, he's about 6'2 and such. So he, he's got good size for the position. Team captain, all that. I think I think, uh, I, I think, I think, think uh, the Jets might be interested in a kid like that if they were looking for a corner. But they'd have to spend one of their early draft picks on one. And I don't know if they would do that unless, talent-wise, they're just so much better than everybody else on the board. At safety, I, I, I don't think they're going to go safety early. Why should they? They were able to get Davis, which we talked about as a possibility. You've got Clark and you've got Adams. And you also have Bernard Converse. So, you know, hopefully he'll get his shot too this year. So I don't think you need one early. I mean, you could look at Bullard. You could look at Bullock from Georgia and USC. Bishop from Utah. Because he's he'd probably be available maybe in the fourth. And as I mentioned, Taylor, who I like somewhere in the fifth or seventh round. And then at any the edge, a couple of guys, if they, now look, I, I again, I don't know, because I do believe that they're going to add one more player up front. I do believe that. I think they, they, they can add one more guy. I don't know if it's going to be an edge guy or a tackle. I hope it's a tackle. And I don't care that they added Kinlaw and Fotu. It, to me, that has nothing to do with whether or not they should add another defensive tackle. Okay, because Kinlaw, they're just hoping they can get him to live up to what he was supposed to be at San Francisco, and he hasn't done yet. Now, Solomon Thomas is, has, has all of a sudden become a guy that is playing the best football of his career. He's still not a first-round draft pick. So hopefully they can do the same thing with Kinlaw, or maybe even better. But, I mean, if you draft one of these guys I'm talking about, then you're, talk, you know, you're definitely bringing in somebody that could be a, you know, a, a key part of your defensive line for years to come, and you're locking them up for four years. You're a young kid. It's not a contract and all that. But if they go to edge, there's a couple of guys later in the draft that I'd keep an eye on. Uh, Jalex Hunt from Houston Christian. All right? This is because if the Jets want a guy that they can definitely kind of stash and, and just develop, that's somebody to keep an eye on. And the other one would be the kid from Washington, Tupola, Fatui Tupola. Really good length for the position. So he's got good size, good length. And another guy that uh, you know could be a nice developmental guy. So I just wanted to, just for the, for the record, let you know who are the guys that I like. And if the Jets can get a hold of any of these guys, I'd be really, really happy. And that's going to, really, and just, by the way, I'll throw out some other players that I like. I don't know if they'd be good fits for the Jets. Again, it's possible. I like the edge uh, uh, defender out of uh, Colorado State, uh, Kamara. Uh, I, I I like Sandra still love him the slot corner from Michigan just don't Michigan uh, uh, the Jets don't need a slot corner. I really believe the place kicker from Alabama Reichert is gonna have a great NFL career. This kid looks like he's got just steel for guts, and that's what you need in, in a place kicker. So whoever gets Reichert's gonna be really happy. And another tight end uh, maybe to keep an eye on. Again, I don't think the, Jet, the Jets are going to be in on tight ends outside of Bowers, but that's the kid Wiley out of TCU. I really like that kid and uh, maybe his upside. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Uh, I just wanted to let everybody know you know, what I'm thinking and get the record on regarding you know, how I would like to see the Jets draft after doing just as much homework and research and, and, and just going over all of this um, – with uh, the, some of the best scouts in the business here at Our Lads. And I get all of this information from these guys. And obviously, I want to use it the best way I can. Um, and uh, I'm very confident that we're going to have a good draft. So 
This is where Joe Douglas excels. And if we want to get an extra pick, if we want to get that extra premium prospect, just keep your fingers crossed that the quarterbacks don't go quick. Make it a lot easier for us to get out of the 10th and move down a few spots so we can get that extra pick. And maybe two picks. It's possible you can get two picks out of it, depending on, on who's coming up to get you. I mean, it's possible that maybe there's a team that uh, that will give up you know, two mid-round picks. Maybe it's not a second. Maybe it's a fourth and a third. Or maybe it's a fourth and a second. That would make it even better. But hey, you know what? If you end up with Brock Bowers or a Dunzay or a Dunzi, then hey, it, uh, that, that'll be fun too. All right. Don't forget, we'll have a link in the description for the r Draft Guide. If you haven't gotten it already, you can get it now. You can get a PDF as soon as you finish listening to this video, and you'll have it to watch the draft. But if you want the hard copy, you can get that as soon as possible, I guess within a few days. And the fact is, the, it's the best time to have it anyway, because then you'll know every single player that the Jets pick and sign in college for agency You'll be able to have just about everyone. Now, of course, you won't have all the signings, the college kids, the, the free agent kids, but you'll have a lot of them. And just about every key guy that they draft and sign will be available in the book for you to take a look at and research over at rlads.com. And again, just like I said in the beginning of the video, we're going to be back on Sunday to recap the draft. Uh, hopefully, Jan will be with me to do it. So I'm looking forward to that. And if, you know, if anything happens, it's really newsworthy. We'll be back between now and then. But worst case scenario, we'll talk to everybody. Oh, matter of fact, just speaking about Jan. He's asking me a question. It has nothing to do with the video, but I'll communicate with Jan when we get when I'm done here. But anyway, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, hey, unfortunately for Jet fans, this is a great time of year for us. I hope uh, I hope playoffs will be the great time for your uh, for us uh, this year. But uh, we have another draft to get better. I, I'm uh, hoping that uh, exactly what will happen, that Joe Douglas will lead the way and uh, we'll have some fun over the next few days. So uh, check back with us. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them. Uh, let me know what's on your mind. And please subscribe, too. All that stuff helps. Share the video if you like it. Like it and all that kind of stuff. And we'll see you guys next time here on Jets FM on EOFN.